Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Well, today I'm gonna to walk you through everything you need to know about staking on Ethereum 2.0. I know this is an episode you've all been looking forward to. Uh, so have I, I've got my favorite ETH t-shirt on. We've been waiting for this transition to proof of stake for a number of years now. So look, in this tutorial, I will run you through all the different options you have um, for a very beginner through the advanced user, the pros and cons of each, uh, just other little things that you should know. And by the end of this tutorial, you can decide whether or not it's for you and at least make an informed decision. So as always, if you wanna learn more about this stuff, there's some great guides out there. Always stick to the official websites, uh, ethereum.org, because there's a number of different ways that you can become one of these validators to help secure the new ETH2 chain. So you've hopefully heard everyone talking about this. Um, Ethereum 2 is a new blockchain and it is gonna complement the old Ethereum chain, which is being called Ethereum 1 or 1.x, because it's still gonna have upgrades and hard forks and improvements uh, until the Ethereum 2 chain is fully developed and finished, and then the two will actually merge together. Now, there's two major changes. So proof of stake is probably the big one where we're moving from uh, proof of work to proof of stake. But the other one is also sharding, where we're gonna break the network up into little shards, and that helps uh, process transactions faster. But the old Ethereum blockchain is just gonna become one of the many shards in the new Ethereum chain. Now that's all gonna happen uh, in a year or two when this completes. And one of the things you do need to understand is that for all intents and purposes, the Ethereum that you deposit into the new blockchain is gonna stay there until that's all complete for a year or two. Now there are ways that people are experimenting with um, to give you a representation of that locked ether so you still have something to show and even been able to interact with that token um, in DeFi. So a bit like a wraps token or a synthetic token, but we'll get into all that at the moment. All you need to know is that we've successfully um, hit that minimum amount that we needed to launch and we're already up to you know over 2 million ETH. So there's quite a bit of ETH in there already staking uh, and the rewards are dependent on how many ETH are staking. So at the beginning, when we hit that minimum, it was around 22% the yield annually. Then that's, you know, that's quite a high yield in a world of low interest rates, but also when you consider coins like Bitcoin and ETH tend to have lower yield. It's the stable coins or the risky assets that tend to have a really high percentage that you can get. So this is gonna be quite attractive. Even at 2 million ETH, it's still uh, 11%. Now, further on down the line, we're also gonna have things like uh, fee burning and um, some of the fees going to the, the miners as well. So it's all just still being finalized how exactly that's gonna work. But these are very attractive yields. Okay, but before we get into how you're actually gonna help the network, this is probably something that's not for beginners per se in terms of doing the full running your own node and doing your own validator from scratch. But there are other ways you can do it, which we're gonna explain. But as always, it's good to have your head around the very basics. So if you are a beginner, um, head over to our knowledge center. This is all free. You know, if you're at the very beginning of your first step, you might even need to, you know, buy your own Ethereum. And um, depending on how you want to do it, you might have heard that there's a 32 ETH minimum. Now, that's if you want to do it all yourself. There are other ways where you can contribute a smaller amount than that and join um, a sort of pool, if you like. But if you need to learn how to do, you know, sending, um, you know, storing all that safely, I highly recommend that you check out all those tutorials we've got. Even things like understanding how the blockchain works, um, proof of work versus proof of stake. Uh, I've done my big episode about the Ethereum 2.0 chain with more details, uh, but I, I really do think it's the, the storage and security side of things which people get so wrong. And you can do all this from the safety of your hardware wallet um, and integrating it with MetaMask. Uh, you will need to generate a new public-private key pair um, if you are planning on running it, uh, a full node by yourself. And obviously, that always comes with the risk of these uh, raft of scams. And you've seen um, in the super tutorial I did, I spoke about how there's so many of these out there which are trying to get you to type in your um, private key or those backup seed phrases. So if you're just out there Googling you know, how to how to become an ETH2 node or how to get rewards. These sort of uh, phishing sites are just gonna be everywhere. You're gonna get these emails from um, Ledger that's been hacked recently, guys. So please, I just really want to drive this point home about never giving out your private key or um, seed phrase to anyone ever because there's so many scammers out there. Okay, so if you want um, more in-depth written guides as well, always stick to the official websites, ethereum.org. But let's get into what you need to know. And there's some great 
um, frequently asked questions that we've heard. I've already touched on a few of these about the uh, minimum 32 ETH and the ways that you can get around that. Um, you know, if your validator drops offline, you will get these small penalties, but it's only equivalent to the reward that you would have got in that time. Now, if you're a nefarious actor and you're trying to do the wrong thing, uh, that's when you will get more harsh penalties or slashed. And so these are kind of the, I guess, the rules of proof of stake, which are a little bit different to proof of work with all the miners. And so you do kind of have a responsibility. If you're going to become a node and promise to help the network, you can't really just be dropping offline and, and that you've got to be there and helping the network when they need you. Alrighty, so very quickly, we saw at the start um, the number of nodes up around 99%. So people are staying online. It's all chugging along really nicely at the moment. You can go to beaconscan.com forward slash statistics and see all the information about the number of validators, uh, the number of blocks and just how that's all chugging along, um, the income that they're earning at the moment. So there's beautiful supportive uh, websites. Uh, consensus is another one and they are helping people do the professional style staking as well. So different um, companies are taking different approaches, targeting the retail investor or the beginner all the way through the professional institutional client or the corporate client. And you've got to remember that a lot of the people that are using the public Ethereum network now that consensus help, they actually want to be running their own nodes. Because when you run your own node, you've got your own version of truth, the own your own version of the whole blockchain. And that's really important rather than relying on others. You might remember recently we had a bit of an issue where one of the uh, third party providers in Fura went offline or it hadn't updated their nodes and then a lot of the exchanges were just using those third party nodes. And so they don't really know what's going on if they're not doing that themselves. So if you can do it, or particularly the exchanges, there's just no excuse why you wouldn't be running your own node these days to support the network. Okay, so I have uh, touched on the uh, yields already in that video I did. Boy, that's coming up to two years ago now, crazy. But th there's talk that, yeah, these are going to remain pretty high, anywhere between, say, 5%, 25 35%, depending on the amount of fees and the number of people that do it. And that's all a bit of a trade-off about, well, what do we need to pay to secure the network? But it is a lot less than what proof of work has been in the past. So this is why you're hearing that Ethereum is going to become uh, more scarce. We won't have as high a supply that we need to pay the miners. Uh, and that's why it's also using less energy. People are excited about that as well. But it's all ex experimental at the moment, guys. So things do change. Um, just be aware of that as well because you are committing to lock your coins up uh, until this is all finished, as I said, in a year or two. Um, depending on what method you use. So let's get into the different methods. And I guess to start off with, um, the first type is just very basic depositing to a website and getting someone else to do it for you. So there's a number of these websites um, dedicated for just staking through the exchanges, which also do this as well. Uh, so staked.us is one of those. Um, this is a great comparative website as well, stakingether.com. And this will actually show you all the different places you can do it. Uh, it sort of outlines the fees as well, and you can uh, check them by type. So are they a dedicated staking pool? Are they a validator as a service? Is it just an exchange that's doing it? Or do you actually want to uh, run a validator yourself? And it will show you those uh, different options as well. So another great resource, I'll link that down below. Um, and, uh, I have mentioned already there's some great in-depth guides out there if you do want to do a uh, in-depth read about it, but particularly more about ETH 2.0. So not just the staking side of things. This is a huge upgrade uh, and evolution in crypto economy. Probably the biggest thing since the Bitcoin halving, I, I really think. So yeah, awesome report by Missouri. Uh, that other one was um, stakingrewards.com. So there's a, a lot of buzz out there at the moment and a lot of excitement that this is finally happening and it's a huge, huge upgrade. Okay, so what are our options? The first one is uh, Coinbase. They're on board where like a number of assets, they let you just deposit. Uh, you know, they've got Tezos here, for example. Uh, Binance are doing it. They've got their range of coins. So that's the first type where you're just depositing your coins to an exchange. Um, and they are doing the staking for you. Now, it depends um, how much they're going to pay out. Some of them charge a fee. Some of them are, are actually subsidizing this at the moment, like uh, Horby are paying out a 20% on Ethereum 2.0 if you're letting them do that for you. So again, pros and cons. Well, obviously, you don't have control of your own coins. You don't control the private key. You're putting your trust in the exchange to do that. 
Um, are the exchanges running their own nodes, like I just mentioned, or are they relying on another third-party service? Is that the best thing for the network? So they're the kind of trade-offs if you are going to use an exchange to do this for you. You obviously need to keep your exchange passwords and 2FA all secure as well because you can still get hacked. Someone gets into the exchange and you know take your crypto. Uh, Ledger is actually the first hardware wallet provider to incorporate this um, natively. So if you have... Um, if you've got your ledger up, you will now see a button when you log in uh, that you can just do the staking through your normal ledger portal, your ledger live, um, that software as well. So that is exciting that the hardware wallet providers are doing that. Um, Trezor hasn't yet, but Ledger are doing that directly. Uh, and the other way here is through my Ether wallet. So this is, um, let's connect my MetaMask. So when you access my Ether wallet, this is just a portal or an interface where you can interact with it with any different type of wallet. So you can connect your hardware wallet. Uh, you can actually do the software version, which is dangerous. Like we said before, you never really want to type in your private key or phrase online because you can have you know key loggers on your computer or anything. So never do that software method. Um, you can connect your MetaMask up here as well. Um, so there's the different ways where you can connect your wallet and just that if you've got a hardware wallet that means just physically connecting it um, and going through the settings again check out my ledger tutorials if you're not sure how to connect it uh, but once you're into my ether wallet you can just scroll down now and they've got a native stake on eth2 button ready to go so you can do this safely um, straight through here which is very easy as well um, that other website I mentioned before staked.us and you can see the yields um, as I said lock up here 18 months, oh sorry, let's uh, refresh that. Um, so these are the first type, the websites which are doing you know, all the different coins and they've just now added ETH2 as well. Now the one that we were very excited about, uh, a more decentralized way to do it was Rocket Pool. So this is a decentralized uh, pool uh, as the name suggests, where you can join with other people if you don't have the minimum 32 ETH. Now at the moment, they haven't launched this. So they're, again, waiting to see uh, a few little final changes and getting their code right before they launch this. So I'm a little bit surprised. They, their test nets went really well, and I thought they'd have this up and running already, uh, but they haven't yet. So once this is up and running, you can stake your Ether, you can put in um, you know, as little as 0.01 ETH and start to get those rewards just by joining a pool. Or you can also, if you're a more advanced user, you can run your own full node and then do the staking as well. Or you can even then let other people uh, come to you. So there's a number of options that they're doing there. Uh, but the thing that I did want to mention is that you will get um, R ETH in return. So uh, this stands for you know Rocket ETH. So that's just saying that, hey, you've deposited, here's a token like an IOU, and now some different DeFi's or other apps will let you still use this RF, this representation. It's a little bit like if you contribute liquidity to the DEXs and they give you that LP token. So it's a little like a synthetic token, an IOU, just to say that, hey, you've got a claim on a deposit um, and you do have some ETH. Now, some people obviously like that because it's better than having you know your ETH locked up for a year or two and you know, not having the freedom to do certain other things that you may want to do. Uh, check out that interview with the guys from Rocket Pool. So Dave is an Aussie guy. That was an awesome interview. Uh, that's coming up to a year old, but it did really walk you through everything you need to know about how their system works and what's happening behind the scenes. Now, another example of this is Ethereum uh, liquid staking by Lido. So they will give you a um, ST ETH token and you'll still get your daily rewards. So Different methods, were, you know, some pools will make you come back and claim your ETH staking rewards. Others will just have it, um, you know, accrue some every six minutes, which is um, kind of like the the block time you can think of it as when they pick the different validators as well. Or others will have it uh, being paid out in daily rewards. But either way, you are going to accrue. Uh, that reward that you get for staking in some ways and different projects are just taking different approaches. So just like Rocket Pool had Reth, uh, Liquid, uh, Lido here have got uh, Steth. Um, very easy, come over, connect your wallet like we did before, uh, just type in the amount that you want to do um, and away you go. So this is why I harp on about education. Once you really do have your head around these concepts um, that I covered in the Super DeFi tutorial, you know, really from scratch, and you're comfortable with using MetaMask or your Ledger or other Ethereum wallets, it really does become the click of a button, guys. Uh, another one here that you can use is uh, Staffy or Staffi. 
They've got a representation called Reth as well, but that's slightly different to the Rocket Pool ETH token. Uh, Staker, this is by um, Anchor. Now they've done uh, multiple coins as well. So this is just another example of where they've got their dedicated ETH service now, along with all their other proof of stake projects. You can become a provider and run a full node like we spoke about as well, or you can just earn those staking rewards and deposits. Uh, they've got a minimum of 0.5 ETH. Next one up here, uh, a Staffi, sorry, I just mentioned that one already. Um, they do have their other coins like Tezos and that as well. Uh, and all those tokens that they give you are referred to as R tokens. So you'd get, you know, R EOS or R Tezos um, when you deposit into their system. Stakehound is the next one there, bringing DeFi and uh, staking together. All the different projects there, they've just added Ethereum to the list recently. Um, Stakefish, this is another a non custodial one. So these platforms, a lot of them are custodial where you're depositing into their system and giving them the trust. So yes, they will give you this token back, but at the same time, um, do you want to be in control of your keys? And that's where you'd be using things like you know the rocket pools and these non-custodial services. Uh, so I don't think Stakefish is live yet, but this is another one that I um, would trust once it's up and running. Uh, next up here, we've got Figment. Uh, very easy to use as well. And the last couple here that I want to mention were uh, professional services. So this is Liquid Stake, and they have actually partnered up with, with Figment to do this. And their approach here is to let you borrow USDC um, against your coin. So you are depositing, you're giving them the trust, you don't have the private keys still, so it is custodial, uh, but they're letting you borrow um, USDC against your coins. Rather than giving you a synthetic uh, ETH token like Reth or Steth that we just saw, they're actually just letting you borrow um, USDC against your coin. So that way you've still got some liquidity, as it says, liquid stake. And this one's gonna be very popular with uh, big professional businesses from what I've heard. Uh, and this is the one that I mentioned at the start as well with consensus uh, code fire. So there's a lot of institutions, guys, that are keen on this. So I know that uh, all the rage at the moment is people talking about uh, institutions getting into Bitcoin but I think this is the next big exciting wave. When institutions learn that they can um, put a bulk lot of Ethereum at stake, they can get that nice attractive yield, they're supporting the network, and a lot of them are building on the network, so they want to be running their own nodes. Um, so it's great that consensus are uh, providing that institutional professional option. Okay, so the last couple that we're getting into here um, are starting to get a little bit more complicated. So Bison Trails uh, is the last one I want to mention there that are offering the enterprise or for individuals. Um, but this is where we get into the, I guess, plug and play section. So if you're not confident enough to install the software and run a full node yourself, there are ways where you can just buy these um, little hardware devices, little boxes and plug them in and they will run the node for you. So the first one is called DAP Node a few different versions there, but these are programmable and very, very easy to use. Um, Avado is another one. Um, not, you know, you sync with your app. Uh, the final one here I wanted to mention was Grid Lattice. You know, they are very, very um, supportive and interactive and um, getting involved with the community to talk to these projects, you know, your Curves, your Xerions. They want people to be able to confidently, um, you know, help support the network that aren't the advanced users. So if you aren't, if you are very, very confident you're an advanced user and you want to do the full thing by yourself, this is where I'd suggest reading the Launchpad guides uh, because you do need to um, sign up, acknowledge all these responsibilities and you know the slashing, but then you get to things like the key management. So this is where you'll need to generate a new public and private key pair. Uh, Bankless have got a fantastic guide on this as well. You will need certain hardware requirements. So you need a pretty good computer. You, you don't need the best computer out there, but you do need a pretty good computer because when you're processing transactions, you're obviously um, writing information to your hard drive to add to the blockchain and keep all that data, um, as well as needing to be online, um, have a decent amount of RAM and a Good internet connection. So they're the kind of hardware specs that you'll need. Then you will need to do the software side of things where you install a client, um, choose what, there's a number of different clients and implementations. Uh, and it's good to support these different versions. We saw recently when one version has a bug, the network can rely on these other versions. So there's already uh, a few different clients that you can use. I wouldn't say that one's 
better than the other, um, but choose the one that you want. Then you will need to install an Ethereum one node because we do need to talk to each other still remember, uh, and then you'll still install your Ethereum two validator as well. So once you've done all that and installed, got your public private key pairs nice and secure for your ETH2 node. That's when you upload your deposit, your ETH into the deposit contract, you know, connecting your wallet through MetaMask like we've spoken about. And then you just need to confirm that uh, transaction and it will say, yeah, your deposit is there and ready to go. So guys, that is the run through. I will post this tutorial um, in our group for members if you've got more questions and you want to get a discussion going and I'll uh, try and be active and answer those as well. Um, if you want any more of our resources, guys, head over and check out our platform. Like I said, uh, all the beginner stuff is free for the more advanced users. If you want any of our research or resources, uh, that's all there in the Collective Shift platform as well. But other than that, guys, I'm just super excited that yes, uh, the sun's going down on the um, old Ethereum to some degree, but don't forget, there's still got plenty of upgrades and improvements to come to help scale the network and complement the network until we have the new ETH 2.0 uh, chain launch and then the two are going to um, join together. And Ethereum's a never finished system, I think. We're always going to be trying to improve it as the ecosystem grows, uh, different technologies come out. So look, this is a very, very exciting time when we've been waiting for this move to proof of stake for years. I can't wait to see the institutional adoption and just uh, level of understanding and interest grow in Ethereum like we've seen in Bitcoin, particularly this year. So look, I hope you found this guide helpful, guys. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share these videos around, and I'll talk to you again soon. Cheers.